Okay, I'm back again with uh, what I think may be the last video on this topic where I'm getting that 47 that appears on the output display during the third micro instruction of the add instruction cycle. And the reason I say that it might be the last video is because I think the issue is, uh, I don't know, it's in part solved or solved well enough that at least the problem isn't occurring. And one of the uh, comments that I got on the video that I posted last night was by Alan F. And he mentioned that I might try zeroing out the entire EEPROM prior to doing the manual programming. That way um, there wouldn't be any bits that are on that shouldn't be on. That made a lot of sense, so I gave that a shot. And I don't know, I mean, it sort of works. Um, at least it's, it solves the problem where the 47 appears on the output display, but I'm still noticing that I'm getting this little micro pulse at times when I shouldn't get it. So I've got the whole breadboard computer configured, you know, with the usual uh, 28 plus 14 program. So let me just step through it. And I'll mention uh, again that I'm still having problems with this uh, double bounce on my manual pulse. Doesn't come up very often, but it does happen. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. So at the start of the program, we're on the LDA instruction cycle, so we're at T0. So I'll pulse the clock, we'll go to T1, T2, T3, T4, pulse again, we're back around to T0, and I didn't get any double bounces there, so that's good. So now we're on the add instruction cycle, we're at T0, pulse the clock to go to T1, and actually I did get a double bounce there. And uh, so I went from T0 to T1, T2. And you'll notice on T2, the third micro instruction of the add instruction cycle, I did get the blip on the oscilloscope, but it's uh, smaller, essentially. I've got the trigger level set at 1.5 volts, so it's just slightly above 1.5 volts, and the scale on the oscilloscope is 10 nanoseconds. So to me, that looks like it's basically... Uh, pretty much exactly 10 nanoseconds from the point where that peak starts to rise to the point where it stops rising. So the blip is still there, but it's a smaller blip essentially. And my assumption is that the characteristics of the EEPROM or the breadboard computer in general are such that as long as that blip is sufficiently small enough, it won't cause the uh, number to come up on the output display. And, uh, you know, bear in mind that as Ben Eater has gone through his videos and showed us his results, you know, we've never actually seen him uh, pulse or put an oscilloscope on uh, pin 14 or really any of the pins of the EE prom like I'm doing here. So maybe even on his uh, breadboard computer, maybe he's getting these glitches, but it just isn't showing up because, uh, you know, because they're so small. So I, that, that's, that's something I just, I don't know. At any rate, let me put the oscilloscope back in single step and continue on through the program. But uh, again, worth noting there that I did get that double bounce. That's the first time I think I've actually had that occur while recording a video. Um, so now carrying on to what'll be T3 and T4 and back around to T0. So now I'm on the out instruction cycle. So T0, uh, T1. Now when I go to T2, the third micro instruction of the out instruction cycle, um, I most definitely should get a logical high. And with the oscilloscope set at a scale of 10 nanoseconds, it'll, I expect to see it peak and then go you know, well off the right edge there because the, the uh, time of a normal pulse coming out of the EEPROM is, um, I want to say, uh, like 20 milliseconds or something. It's, it's, you know, compared to where the scale is at on this nanosecond, it's an eternity. So let me pulse the clock again. Yep, so there we go. We go to a T2, and we got our logical high, which we can see back there on the oscilloscope. And now when I pulse, actually, let me go ahead and put it back in a single step just to see if we have any more blips coming out. 
But now when I pulse the clock again, we should get our answer on the output display. And we do, and it did go to T3 there, no double bounce. T4, pulse the clock again, we're back around at T0 of the halt instruction cycle, so we only have two micro instructions left. So T1, T2, and we're halted. Okay, so that, again, isn't extremely satisfying to me in terms of an absolute solution. I would prefer to see no blips on the oscilloscope, but um, I guess primarily at this point, as long as that 47 or whatever number happens to be uh, on the instruction register at the time, as long as that doesn't come out to the output display, I, I guess that I can call that solved. Um, let me just step through this one more time just to look through, just to kind of see it again, I guess, but I'll go much quicker. So we're on LDA, T0, T1, T2, T3, T4. Now we're on add, T0, T1, and this is where we expect to see the blip, T2. And that's interesting. See, that time I didn't get it. Uh, T3, T4. Now we're back around a T0 of the out, T1. And we most definitely, most positively should get a, a logical high now. T2, and there it is. Reset, or single step. T3, well, oh wait, I, I hit the reset button. Uh, I, I probably should label these, although I don't think it would make a difference. Um, let me just run through that again. So T1, T2, T3, T4, T0, T1, T2. Okay, and I did not get the blip on the oscilloscope there again that time. T3, T4, T0, T1, and this is where we expect the logical high to come from. And there it is. T3, T4, T0, T1, T2, and we're halted. Okay, so I guess I'm going to say that that's going to be it for this issue where I'm seeing that 47 on the output display. Um, I, I don't really plan on making any more videos on this topic unless I come across something that um, I think is uh, worthwhile. But otherwise, uh, you know, I, I really don't know what more to do about this. The uh, oscilloscope, as we saw there, at least one time and only, and only that one time, I was still getting that pulse there, which was just north of 1.5 volts during that third micro instruction of the add instruction cycle coming off of pin 14 or IO4 of the second EE prom, but it, it appears at least that as long as that voltage threshold is below a certain number, whatever that number happens to be, or uh, or I should say and or, the pulse width is short enough, which in this case is now down to uh, less than 10 nanoseconds. Um, as long as that's the case, then it doesn't appear to be sufficient to trigger the OI control signal to pull in the data from the bus and put it on the output display. And, uh, you know, again, bearing in mind that we've never actually seen Ben Eater go through in his videos and probe any of his EEPROM pins like I'm doing here. So for all we know, he may be experiencing this on his system as well, and we're just not seeing it. So I'm going I'm to leave it at that.